Every day we hear about horrible things that people have done in the news and our immediate reaction is to hope that they get punished for their actions. However, most people don't stop to question what that punishment entails and whether it's even warranted. Prisoners are often beaten, stabbed, raped and killed, sometimes even by corrupt officials who abuse their power. 10 to 15% of the prison population suffer from severe and enduring mental illnesses and are denied the care they need. Some are even put in solitary confinement, which would worsen their mental state. There is a philosophical dilemma which needs to be considered when looking at this issue as to whether free will exists or whether our actions are solely determined by our nature and nurture. We are taking the standpoint that our actions are predetermined for this argument and why that means we need change in our prison system. When it comes to decision making, we can turn to two factors, our nature and nurture. Nature consists of our physical anatomy, so our brain and our cells. When we make a decision, have a thought, or even feel an emotion, what physically happens is neurotransmitters and chemicals firing in our brains and activating different responses. This suggests that a criminal cannot be held responsible for their actions, as it is purely a chemical reaction that is beyond their control. However, our responses to these chemicals are also affected by different factors, our genetic makeup and epigenetics, which genes are switched on and off. A study on the epigenetic landscape of alcoholism concluded that epigenetic mechanisms are affected by environmental factors, and in the case of alcoholism, alcohol itself is a factor. This suggests that our nurture influences our nature through epigenetics and suggests some level of control over our own nature. So feasibly, if the criminal had control over their environment, they could be held responsible for their actions on some level, even within nature. It is also evident that people are products of their experiences, the people they interact with, their education, the media they consume, and any significant events in their life. All these examples, to a certain extent, are beyond the control of the individual, but have a huge impact on the person they become and the decisions they will make. Following this reasoning, you could make the argument that since people are simply products of their nurture, they cannot be held responsible for their actions, which are caused by factors beyond them. For example, a study for the National Institute of Justice showed that childhood abuse increases the likelihood of criminal behaviour in later life. In the UK, approximately 29% of prisoners have experienced abuse, which highlights the correlation between a challenging upbringing and crime. Furthermore, when considering the impact of education and media, it is made clear that the information we absorb influences our view on the world. Take the example of Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb, who, through their reading of Niche, were convinced that they were one of the ubermensch discussed, which allowed them to transcend the laws of society due to their superior intellect, and this entitled them to murder Bobby Franks. Their lawyer, Clarence Darrow, at their trial argued, it is hardly fair to hang a 19-year-old boy for the philosophy that was taught him at the university. The two boys ended up being in prison for life instead of the death sentence that was originally campaigned for by the public. This leads us to believe that the death sentence is not justifiable as a response to an action which stemmed from one's nurture. Therefore, all human life is valuable and mercy should be applied in all situations because blaming someone for their upbringing, which again is out of their control, is not logical. From these arguments, some would draw the conclusion that since the prisoner isn't at fault for their actions, they don't deserve any harsh consequence. However, our argument is that one cannot be blamed for the immorality of their action as there are millions of factors that led them to making that decision and so they should be offered understanding and forgiveness. Nevertheless, they must be held physically responsible to maintain order in society. Their imprisonment can seem harsh when we understand that the concept of free will within decision making is just an illusion, yet it is essential to avoid anarchy. We've determined the accountability criminals have for their actions, however how we apply this conclusion to the treatment of prisoners must be discussed. We believe that the focus of prison should be rehabilitation rather than punishment, so that some criminals can re-enter society. There should also be a larger focus on the mental health of criminals, including dealing with trauma, which has shown to be a large factor in criminal activity, and prescribing medication for serious illnesses such as BPD and schizophrenia. Finally, we have noted Norway's successful prison system, which keeps reoffending rates low and believe other countries should take on this approach.